My name is Don Tuttle. I'm the Global Training Specialist at Luxion, the makers of Keyshot. Today, we're going to go over a few advanced lighting tips. Now, since this is advanced, I'm assuming that you have an understanding of the HDRI editor. So I'm not going to dive deep into the pins and what they do. To begin, I like to leave all of the defaults where they are simply because if I wanted to leverage this HDRI for another product that had the same camera angle, I wouldn't have to rotate it around. You'll notice that the background color is set to white while lighting using a white background is a great best practice. If your lighting works on a white background, then it will work on a transparent or any other colored background. You'll notice I have turned off ground shadows and reflections. I like to have control over my ground, so I'm using a ground plane with the ground material. Now I'm going to move over to the HDRI editor, clicking this tab here. The background color is set to black. We could start out with a gradient, but I think uh, for our lesson here, I'm gonna keep it on black. I'm gonna start out by adding a key light. And because there's a lot of nice rounds on this model, I'm going to use a rectangular shaped light and I'm going to cut it in half because I want softness as well as a hard edge. All right, so we've got our key light there and key light is really going to be that the light that that shows off your product. Maybe it's it provides a little bit more of a diffuse or it's going to show the shape uh, or the uh, form of the product. And I think I'm going to treat this one as a front area. You'll see here we've got a nice line going there from the half light that we've selected. Uh, there is some softness in there, but I'd like to see a little bit more. So I'm going to go and adjust the fall off mode down here. I'm selecting exponential because exponential is a physically accurate uh, fall off for lighting. I'm going to go up to the brightness and put in 2.8, which I found is a, a great value to start with when utilizing the default or standard key shot materials. So I've got that placed there. Uh, I like how the highlights are falling in here. I'm, I can see the rounds going and and some different shapes happening in there like this this portion here and how it cuts off there. You'll notice that there are some of these jaggy pixels in there, and that's because we need to generate a high resolution HDRI. Whenever we make an adjustment to the HDRI, it's giving us a low resolution preview. So to create a high resolution, I'm gonna click this recycle icon there. And now you can see that we've got a nice or a smoother appearance on uh, the lighting overall. Next, let's go and add a rim light. Uh, so I'll create that light and then I'm going to kind of click in here. I think that maybe we need to add this rim light in the back. I think that looks, that looks decent. Maybe we can get it over there. Yeah, I think that's, that's about where we want it. It's kind of hitting that rim. It is a little large. Uh, so again, I'm going to adjust that exponential. Kind of gives it a little bit more of a fall off. We don't want it to go pure white. So I'm kind of okay with that. Um, but as I mentioned, it was a little large because it's just supposed to show that rim. I'm going to put in 20. Down at the brightness again, I'm going to put 2.8 kind of start out with. And we're, we're getting some pretty strong highlights. Uh, so I'm going to turn up that fall off instead of adjusting the brightness so we can soften that up some. Great. So now I'm going to add somewhat of a diffuse light to the front here. Click that target so I can simply click inside the model to place that light where I want it. I think getting the front illuminated is nice. I'll select the rectangular shape. The reason why is we can control the X and Y values of the rectangular light so i'm able to get that to spread across i want to kind of tighten it up some maybe let's let's use that half light again so now you can see we've kind of got this edge this lip here's got a small fade in there which helps provide some nice contrast 
that. And I'm going to continue to make it wider so we can bring some of that light extending across there. Next, I'm going to add my bounce light. And uh, what I mean by a bounce light is this is kind of simulating that reflection coming off of the floor. So I'm just going to kind of click in here to see if we can get like underneath those rounds. There we go. So now we're getting a highlight in there again. I'm going to go rectangular because this is not extending across. So I'm going to adjust that on the X. There we go. And then let's, uh, let's do a half light again. There we go. Half light's kind of simulating that horizon. And uh, let's change it to the exponential. Go 2.8. Getting something there. Going to make the Y. There we go. Tightening up the Y. Great. Got that there, 2.8. like how that appears. I'm going to hit done. I'm going to add one more light. This is going to be a uh, diffused light so we can have it appear a little bit softer than the rest. And I'm trying to just grab this top round here. Uh, since that's higher up and not close to the uh, horizon, I'm not going to make it a half light, but I do only want it to extend along this edge here. And right now it's going over and blending with this other light there. So I'm going to move it over just a skosh and then down. So we kind of see that part break a little bit better. And let's rotate it just a little bit so we can kind of get a nice maybe a nice round in there and i am now going to scale it down on the y so you can see it kind of wrapping around there as well as this edge there uh, that looks pretty good so i'm going to hit done and then let's add a, another light for the front here because it's getting a little dark kind of like how this appears Let's go and make those adjustments. Exponential 2.8. Now we're really starting to see that metallic part come out. I am going to go back to this light here because I'm seeing this funky looking triangle. So let's soften that up. Forgot to set it. So I'm going to put exponential on there. I'm going to adjust this fall off a little bit. It is softening it. A lot more. Let's put in the 2.8. There we go. So now we've got some more of a contrast. It is a little bit, a little bright. So let's increase the uh, fall off just a, just a bit. And now we can go back to this light and let's increase the size some. It's acting as our diffuse. We're really getting some nice darks in here as well as the flakes and some white highlights there. See what a rectangular looks like? Yeah, let's keep it at the circular. See what a cutoff looks like? I mean, a half. Yeah, let's leave that where it's at. Hit done. And maybe we can get one more light in here. That's because I like that contrast. Now that that light is appearing closer to the horizon, so I'm going to make it a half light. There we go. So we're starting to see the the form and the shape of the uh, car there. Now I'm going to go back to the rim because you can see that right now that's blending in. So select that rim. And we're going to make it a little bit smaller and then increase the other fall off on there. So I cre increase the fall off enough. Let's make it larger again, see if we can wrap it around. And I'm just going to drop this down to two now. Cool. And last, let's go ahead and apply a gradient so we can kind of get this overall ambient 
environment feel. Overall, I think this is uh, in a pretty good spot. I hope that these quick tips have helped you out. Again, my name is Don Tuttle. I'm the Global Training Specialist at Luxion. Thanks for watching.